Hello, and welcome to Domversations. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. And if you're returning, welcome back. And thank you for being a listener. I appreciate it so much. So I'm doing a little intro ahead of time. Jessica Armstrong is on the show today. I would like her to be my new best friend. This is the first she's hearing of it. (laughs) I know I'm goofy. Anyway, Jessica's on the show today to talk about fashion, and it would just be so fun to do her job. And she just is down to earth, super cool. And um, her puppy was with her and in the background. So if you hear any noise, that's what it was. She was paranoid about it, and I told her it was fine. I recently had to put my dog down, um, and she was so sweet and very understanding about it when... I was a little out of sorts at the beginning, but made it through. So I hope you enjoy the episode. If you'd like to follow me, I am on all the socials at Donversations Podcast. I'd love to have you. And um, I am on YouTube now doing videos. So today, Jessica is not on video, but hopefully she'll come back sometime and we will get to do an on video one, maybe a little fashion show. What do you think, Jessica? Okay. I hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks, guys. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Jessica Armstrong, who is a wardrobe stylist in Los Angeles. Welcome, Jessica. I'm so happy to have you here. Hi, Dawn. Thank you so much. I'm excited too. Yeah, this is great. Okay, so I what caught my eye about you? Well, first of all, I've been wanting to do more fashion uh, podcast episodes because I find it so interesting. Do you have a style icon? Do you have you always had somebody that you loved? I would say I have a few. I think one is definitely Kate Moss. I mean, she's iconic and I love just how effortless and just cool her fashion sense is. And then I also really admire Rihanna too, because yeah. I really like the um, fact that she just will go for it and just does whatever she wants and breaks boundaries. So I like that as well. Yeah. Well, okay. So I am in the middle of the Midwest, literally in Nebraska, in the middle of the Midwest. And we get the trends from like New York and LA and stuff like a year after. Yeah, little <laughs> we're delayed. so behind. <laughs> are you guys like lined up with the UK? Are you guys, or I should say Europe, or are they ahead of us as far as fashion goes? Um, well, I feel like more ahead is almost like when I've gone to Japan. Okay. They've been more um, cutting edge and it, you go there and I don't know if you've been, but like walking the streets in Tokyo, everybody is so on point, super sophisticated with their fashion. You know, they're known for like the Harajuku too, which is the over the top. And I think that they set a lot of trends. Um, As far as like um, fashion week all over Europe goes, I think that is definitely uh, sets the pace. Like I have attended and been a part of Los Angeles fashion week and New York fashion week. And it's obviously New York is um, more high end than Los Angeles because so many of the design houses are based there. It's much more of an editorial city. So that's pretty cutting edge and up to speed with Europe. Um, LA is a little bit behind. I think we're kind of following the trends that New York sets, to be honest. Okay. LA has such a more um, commercial vibe to their fashion. So that's also, I worked um, in New York for a year doing styling before coming to Los Angeles. And that's really the big difference is that's more about celebrity and being commercialized and approachable here. It's more editorial runaway in New York, which is more on par with Europe. Okay. So did you love being in New York and just being in the center of all that? I can't even imagine what that was like. Well, I love visiting New York. (laughs) (laughs) Living there was a bit much for me just because I am an outdoor and active person and it's very much city nonstop all the time, but it was very exciting. It's where I got my um, first experience in styling. I started as a fashion designer working in San Francisco I worked for a small manufacturing company, which means I designed and then went to market and sold the designs to major labels. So I worked in fast fashion, basically designing for Urban Outfitters, Nordstrom, Stelias, a lot of those like trendy quick where we'd have a lot of different um, collections. And then after that, I decided to move to New York to get into styling. And so it was super exciting. I mean, all of a sudden I was working with 
high um, fashion models, like you're working on runways, editorials, things like that. And wow. it was really beautiful, exciting, not commercial, which is where I come from. Um, so I did really enjoy it. It's really high paced. Like I went to fashion week, sat in the second row or something. Oh that my god! Attending all those kind of events, seeing the behind the scenes. Like mm-hmm. I loved that. And then um, after getting a good year of experience, I decided to come back to the West Coast just because it's more of my lifestyle. I like the mm-hmm. quality of life here a bit better. But absolutely, as far as like being in the thick of it with fashion, New York is. Where it's at if you want to be in the U.S. Yeah. So what do you think? What's your opinion about fast fashion? It's kind of, you know, people talk about it negative now, you know, where Mm -hmm. it's like you should be going to consignment stores and thrift stores and reusing. Like, do you do you think fast fashion has a place or do you think? I mean, I guess it's kind of tricky because, of course, you have to worry about the carbon footprint. And I Mm -hmm. do think about that. Um, I don't think that we're all going to only wear vintage and (laughs) throwback. But I love the idea of um, now how you can reinvent how a lot of clothing is like one offs you can buy and it's been recycled or upcycled, as they say. So it might be like you can even get that with fast fashion brands such as like Urban Outfitters. They'll sell mm-hmm. individual pieces where it's been reworked. You know, so I think okay. that's a great concept. And I love how some brands are making a point of using uh, lines that are made out of sustainable materials mm-hmm. and recyclable and things like that. Because I, I don't think that we're going to get rid of fast fashion. A lot of people can't afford not to. And especially right. with but um, I think there's a better way to do it. And so like, for instance, even this year, it was really fun. Uh, Just in January, I hosted an event with my girlfriends. I called it a sip and swap. And what I did was we got together, we had a little wine and I set up my living room to be like a boutique and everybody brought anywhere from like five to 20 pieces and hung them up. Like it was a store and you could shop and everybody had so much fun. That's an awesome idea. Events like that, you know? And so we all went home and felt like we reworked our closets. It was free (laughs) and it was also eco-friendly. Right. So it's great to do things like that. And I also, when I work with personal styling clients, I always recommend that they invest in some quality pieces that they will wear for years. So you shouldn't just have fast fashion all the time, but it's also... I understand like depends on people's budget. Right. Yeah. I think the fast fashion comes into play for people that can't afford maybe like um, the super high end t-shirts, you know, like I, if you're looking for a really good t-shirt and then it's like, oh, that's $150. Like I'm not going to spend that on something that I'm just bumming around in with shorts. So the fast fashion, yeah, I'll get on Amazon or go to Target and get a couple of things there. Yeah. And I think there's a place for that. And then hopefully people can be more mindful of just fitting in when they don't need to and also doing things like sharing it, taking it to um, a consignment store, things like that too. Yeah. So you, you opened your own online store, right? Correct. Okay. When did you open that? Closet Intuition. I'm sorry. When did you open it? So I had the launch party on December 2nd of 2023. So it's very new. Okay. It's kind of a soft uh, opening leading up to that because there's so much to do to kind of get it off the ground. And the concept with the store is that it's your one stop shop for not just um, wardrobe, but also for styling tools. Because I work as a wardrobe stylist, I know a lot of things that people need to perfect their wardrobe. So you always can avoid fashion emergencies. And a lot of people don't know what those tools are that could help them. So the idea is that you can come to the shop and you can get key basics, men and women. And then I also highlight seasonal pieces that I recommend. So that will change each uh, collection, spring, summer, or fall, winter. And then on top of it, I have the styling tools. And um, that way, if you were saying you're going to an event or you were just packing for a trip and you didn't know and you wanted somebody to give you expertise, but you weren't going to hire a stylist. You could go mm-hmm. here and be like, okay, Jessica says these basics have me covered. And if I'm going on travel vacation, here's what she has in her jet setting collection. Oh, I can find a great swimsuit. I can find a great dress or cover up, mm-hmm. or I'm going to this event. What dresses does she have? What's current, what shoes are on trend right now? It's kind of just a one-stop 
Yeah. And so I highlight some of the brands that um, they're not as much of a fast fashion or mainstream brands, but they're more brands that I work with locally here. Mm -hmm. And so I highlight those. And then also I have a few of my own pieces. Well, and you came up, I don't, uh, correct me if I don't remember, is it 19 items that are on your stylist on the go kit that you created? Yes. Exactly. Yeah, so I thought that was so smart. That's so genius. Oh, yeah. So do you, okay, you can give a couple examples of what's on that list, but what is your favorite? What's your one that you're like, must have, everybody needs to have? Okay, so let me explain how it works. It's okay. That kit has all 19 items. And so this is called Your Stylist on the Go. It's um, compact, TSA approved, um, maybe like eight inches by like six inches or so, bolts, unfolds to three different pouches. And so all 19 items are in this package. Awesome. And so that way it's like everything you need and didn't know you need. And it starts with just a candle that I've designed. Cause I think when you travel, it's nice to be able to set the vibe of your hotel. So it smells like home. It's nice. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is for fashion. So it varies from fashion tape, which, um, are you familiar with that? Yes. Yeah. Double sided <laughs> tape, whether you need to hold a um, strap in place or a seam. Then also I have in there, um, the seamless nipple covers, which I offer in three different skin tones. And those are so important because they're seamless. A lot of places, like you could pop into a CVS, let's say you're on vacation. Yeah. And you're like, I don't want to wear a bra with this dress. But they all share, sell these ones that are the shape of a flower or something. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> What's the point of wearing that, right? It almost looks worse. It's like a highlight. Yeah. So those are included. Um, also, one thing that a lot of people are not familiar with that I just absolutely love is the deodorant sponge. You don't need water or anything. You just, you always get those lines from deodorant. Yeah. Maybe a dark top, and it you're ready to go, and then all of a sudden you look sloppy. So those take it off with no problem, no water needed. There's also um, magic erasers for keeping your shoes clean. There's a seamless thong which all women need. And yeah. That comes in extra small through extra large, also in various skin tones. I have laundry pods because sometimes you need to do like a hand wash, maybe in your hotel room or your Airbnb. I have the laundry cord that doesn't snag. You can attach it through the shower. There's also a lens wipe, microfibers. Um, I can just keep going. There's a yeah, lot you thought of everything. In this kit. Yeah, it is definitely curated based off of lots of travels and lots of time working with different clients. Uh, has eco-friendly reusable um, lint roller. A lot of different things. And yeah, that's awesome. Lights, it goes on and on. And it all just fits in one little kit. So it's very convenient. Right. And like you said, TSA approved, because that's such a yes. hassle if you're trying to do your own individual stuff. And it's like, how many ounces is this? And exactly. you can't keep up with all the changes that I love that. When I was reading through that, I'm like, oh my gosh, she thought of everything. Yes. Yeah. So you don't even have to worry about that. You can, if you don't want to put it in your suitcase, you can put it in your carry-on, you can put it in your tote. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so have you been a personal stylist? Yeah. So I work in um, various um, facets in styling. I work in ad campaigns. Okay. So that can be uh, for print or motion. So that would mean like, for example, I just worked on a Kia campaign. So that's styling the models for an advertisement for the car by Kia. Um, then I also work in event styling. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with that show that just came out this past week called Three Body Problem on Netflix. I styled one of the actors for the premiere here in LA. Oh, cool. I styled someone for the Elton John Oscars after party just the week before that. I've worked on um, the Oscars as well, People's Choice Awards. So um, that will be more of the event styling. And then, uh, for lack of a better word, I will say I style normal people, <laughs> which is um, I love working with people that just have an interest in fashion but don't have the time. Or maybe they're, they do want to present themselves a certain way, but they're not really sure how or they're intimidated by fashion. I find all different kinds of reasons. Some people are going through a life change, whether it's a divorce, promotion. Um, so I work with a lot of normal people. And yeah. then I just create non-celebrity doing styling as well. So Do you feel like the, the celebrities, they have as much insecurities as the rest of us? 
I mean, oh, yeah, I think so for sure, especially because they're under a microscope. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, getting, and getting your picture taken, all every angle. I mean, I don't even mm-hmm. like it when somebody takes one picture. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't imagine so it's having like, it from all the angles. Magnified. <laughs> Are you originally from California or LA or? I grew up in Northern California. So I grew up in Sacramento, which basically had no exposure to any of this. (laughs) But ever since I was a little kid, I always had an interest in fashion and magazines. I wasn't really sure what capacity, but I knew I wanted to be involved in fashion. And I kind of thought the only way was to work in fashion magazines. So I thought I wanted to be a fashion photographer. And I went to college at UCSB and I studied um, photography and art history and afterwards I started working as a photographer and realized that wasn't what I wanted to do but went back to school and got my design degree and then from there I learned more about the uh, possibilities with design and then from there styling so it was kind of a I organically got here, not a linear road, lots of little steps along the way. Yeah. So I did not grow up knowing this was even a job. I didn't even know selling <laughs> was a job until my mid or late 20s. <laughs> That's oh, funny. What I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. But you learned about photography and stuff too. Like, that's cool that you know the different facets of oh, the biz. Absolutely. Yeah. And the making fashion. Know the better. Yeah. So, what what's in your future? Like, do you want to make your own? clothing line someday do you think no the, my design days as far as having my own line are behind me I don't <laughs> have an interest <laughs> in that but I do really love having the online store and highlighting brands that I really want to support and that I think are underexposed and that people would really enjoy and then also in my key basics, I have designed a blouse and a sweater. So I want to go forward just having more um, pieces that I introduce that way, but not having necessarily okay. a whole store of my own designs, but just mm-hmm. having a key basic here and there or a seasonal piece that I will introduce as um, sort of like a capsule collection. Okay. So yeah. the stores that you promote, are they online stores only? Are they local? Or are they all over? They're all over. Um, I have one called Willa Phoenix, which is a vegan leather shoe brand based out of the UK. Um, Then I also have, um, speaking of sustainable fashion, I have a vintage um, boutique that's based out of Los Angeles that I work with. I also have then a men's and women's line that's based out of Malta. So it's really all across the globe. Yeah. Do they approach you or or is it brands that you became aware of? It's based off of actually uh, relationships that I uh, made through the showrooms I worked with here in LA. And so um, as a stylist, like if you're doing event styling, let's say for like a celebrity as we're talking about, you typically borrow pieces from showrooms and these showrooms, um, they represent a wide range of designers that are local, you know, international as well. And so then what you do is you get to pull pieces from them in exchange for credit when the pieces are worn. And so over the years, I've gotten to know some of these brands well and representatives. And so when I decided to launch the store, I then approached some of them and asked them if they would be interested because for them, it's just extra exposure, you know, and right. another opportunity to get their brand out there. And then for me, it was a way for me to offer my clients and other people interested in fashion a one-stop shop where they could just see an interesting eclectic group of pieces without having to search all over the internet and do all the research on their own. Okay. Do you get where people wish that they could come and try things on or do you have a good like uh, return policy type of thing or? The return policy is pretty forgiving, but it's based on each brand. So they come up with their return policy. Okay. However, I have had some pop-ups. So when I've done pop-up events and I've had samples, so then people can try things on at the event. Mm -hmm. Um, but otherwise it's, um, not possible just because I would have to house all the inventory. Oh, sure. That makes sense. Yeah. So um, what we do is I actually use the drop shipping method, which mm-hmm. is what enables me to work with so many different brands. But people, if they don't like it, you know, happy to take it back and exchange it for something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've learned just after COVID, 
you know, we all were shopping online. <laughs> that was just kind of oh, our option absolutely. after COVID when everything was shut. So I've learned that you really do have to look at the manufacturer's measurements. You know, don't just say, mm-hmm. well, I'm a medium, I'm always a medium or whatever. You really do have to look oh. anymore and just see the measurements. And that does create a lot of less hassle of trying to return stuff if you just look ahead. Absolutely. Every brand is so different and how it fits. And so one thing that is nice about like having the store and it being such a small, I'm not like a a large uh, commercial brand is that you're going to talk to me directly. So if you have any questions or you email, I'm able to get back to you and happy to help. You know, I had one woman that had a question about the shoes and I called her and she's like, oh my gosh, this is the best customer service. I can't believe it. (laughs) I'm like, that's my store, (laughs) you know, happy to help. So that's like, I try to have a real personal touch to it. If anybody has questions, they can email me, they can call me, happy to answer them and go over anything in detail. So yeah, it's that's not, so exciting yes, to have your own. Like, yeah, <laughs> to have your own store. That's awesome. So, do you work from home then, basically? Yeah, I mean it's a mix. So I work from home. I have a studio, which is basically where I house my samples and also what I call my kit, which is for my um, commercial jobs. And I will prep for jobs out of there. And then I'm on the field, I guess you would say, out in the field a lot because I'm always constantly at the different malls and boutiques and running around. And then when I'm on set, I'm all over Los Angeles, sometimes different cities. So it just depends. So my days are never the same. Oh, my God. But that's kind of fun, yeah. too. Never oh, yeah. Monotonous. Absolutely. Yeah, your yeah, head's spinning. It. But <laughs> yeah, it's not predictable. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever gotten like... um celebrity like scared of anybody that you had to dress before or has everybody been pretty nice that you've dealt with um I would say for the most part everyone's been really nice I mean you get people that are sometimes difficult (laughs) Um, but I would think that it's kind of actually sort of funny that a lot of times um stylists joke that usually the people that are not as well known are almost the ones that are more difficult and the bigger names are not. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. That's funny. Um, yeah, one last absolutely. thing, and then I'll let you promote yourself. What is your style? How do you like to dress? Oh gosh, I would say my style is very eclectic. It really depends on my mood. So I don't really put myself in the box of whether it's crappy or edgy or urban, you know, it really is just like, even if you were to look at my Instagram, you could see how differently I present myself from day to day. So Mm -hmm. I don't have one style in particular. And I do like, my dog just started. That's okay. I do like (laughs) to um, embrace trends too. So I have a lot of fun with those. Um, One of those people that doesn't believe in that saying like, oh, I love that. I wish I could wear it. I think you can wear anything you want to wear. And so I like to just do whatever I feel like. I don't want to subscribe to one type of style. Right, right. Is is it true that preppy is in for spring? Have you noticed yeah, that in LA? It is. It's like a real big moment with the throwback with the schoolgirl look. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's yes, what I thought school. I heard. But again, prep school won't. was all over the uh, runways. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I have felt that way though, when I've seen somebody that's always looked super cute in whatever their style is. And then I would go out and pick something out that was similar that they had on and I put it on and I'm like, I feel like I'm in a Halloween costume or I feel like I'm playing dress up. I mean, so you do have to trust your intuition because sometimes when you put something on, it's just, it's just not, not right. Yeah. I mean, a huge part of it is definitely being comfortable. When I work with my personal clients, I'm always like very clear that I'm not going to try and dress them up as a doll. I want them to feel (laughs) comfortable because otherwise you can just sense it if somebody is not comfortable in their skin and then they feel awkward and it just won't work. So when I say you can wear anything, it has to be really something that you want and that you gravitate towards. And then what's important too, is just figuring out how to work with your proportions, your skin tone. Like there's so many different things that go into it because there could be, like you're saying, preppy can be done so many different ways. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It doesn't mean that everyone has to be in a short pleated skirt. <laughs> it can also be, there's all those collegiate looking sweater vests and there's different ways of working in the trends. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's just a matter of um, getting out of your comfort zone too. 
I mean, because sometimes yeah, things can feel weird and it's like, well, that's because it's not what you normally wear. Sometimes you have to put yourself out there and just try it, try it for a day, see if it, I know. How it feels. One, one thing that I've found a lot of people feel that way about is hats. And so I have one client and I was like, I know you just put it on. You feel like you walk in a room. I have a hat on. Like it's just like screaming. <laughs> I'm wearing a hat. And I'm like, but you're the only one that's thinking that because someone else will look at you and be like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Oh, she's accessorized. But when it's something you just haven't gotten comfortable with yet, it feels yes. like it's like this blaring <laughs> alarm and nobody else is even noticing. <laughs> yep. That I have had that experience when I've tried to have people switch their part. When I did oh, hair, yeah. like just wear it to this side, you'll get more volume that way. And they'd be, oh no, no, I can't do that. I'm like, seriously, yeah. it's just exactly. instead of over it's here. Just, so it's just funny. in your own head. <laughs> yeah. So when I say with people, you can wear whatever you want to wear. It's just a sense of getting comfortable in it and feeling like um, you're not, I don't know, thinking it through too much, like overthinking. Right. It. Yeah. Yeah. So tell people how they can find you, how they can find your new online store, all that good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me on Instagram and on TikTok. On Instagram, I have my styling page, which is Jessica Armstrong underscore style. And then I also have the store, which is closet intuition. Love it. And then the TikTok is also Closet Intuition. So it's all pretty straightforward. And of course, I also have my website. Uh, my personal one is jessica-armstrong.com. There you can see all my commercial work and also my personal styling services. And then I also have my store, which is just www.closetintuition.com. Awesome. And there you can see all the things that I offer. And another thing I was going to tell you that's very exciting is um, in a few weeks, I believe, maybe a month, I'm going to be launching my mini kit. And what that is, is going to be just a smaller version of your stylist on the mm -hmm. go. And this is the concept behind it is like maybe it's a night out or you're just going on a quick weekend trip. Oh. You're just seeing a small tote. You don't want to bring um, the whole kit with you because you don't think you're going to need that many things. But this I offer uh, five essential items and you get to choose them based out of the eight that we're offering. So you get to customize it. That's what I was so just going to ask. You're, you're well. way ahead of it. Yeah. <laughs> I was just ask that. That's so, awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. So you'll see that in the store coming up. And if you go into the basics, you'll see I have either the Jessica blouse, which is obviously the blouse I designed inspired by me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a sweater. It's called the Gina sweater. And so those are the two items that I did design for the store, which are key basics. And the idea behind them is you can dress them up and you can dress them down. And it's just like a really good staple to have in your wardrobe. I wear the sweater all the time to work. And I also wear it in my like dating life. I wear it just in my casual life. And then same with the blouse too. And one thing that's fun also, if you visit the Instagram is you'll see that I have made um, little tutorials, I guess you could call them. Okay. Like, style this three ways or wearing it versus styling it. What's, you know, the way where someone, because I find a lot of people, they're like, I don't know what to do with fashion to make it look different, right? Like I have it in my closet. I don't know what to do. And so I'm like, okay, here's this sweater. I'm going to show you how to wear it three different ways, how I've accessorized it differently, how I've taken it from being a daytime look to an office look to a night look. So you'll find some of that on Instagram as well. Oh my God. I'm going to stalk that page. <laughs> <laughs> I run into that all the time where I've got like all the key items in my closet yes. and then I just look at them and then I just put on a sweatshirt. <laughs> that is <laughs> the common problem. <laughs> so you are dating right now? Oh gosh, I guess you could call it that. Yes, Los <laughs> Angeles is a tricky place. Well, I was date, just, but I am out there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! You're adorable. I was just thinking, like, yeah. do you do you style like if you go on a date and you see it, and the guy is like not put together? Is that well, like really a funny. check? Is a lot of the men are intimidated because they know I'm a stylist, so they always like overthink what to wear. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh my gosh, I know what to wear. Is is this okay? Yeah. And I actually, as long as a man looks put together, I appreciate that. I don't need them to be overly stylized. Right, uh, right. I think this is more a lot of times when it comes to men. Like, I think you should be well tailored, clean, you know, pressed, steamed. Mm -hmm. Like, that's great. 
have good fit, but I don't expect anything flashy. So it's kind of funny. I'll see different extremes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then after you go on enough, enough bad dates, then it's like, just please be showered. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. You run into that too. I know I have being in LA, I live on the West side by the beach. I have had some that have shown up in like board shorts and flip flops, which is unacceptable. Oh my, <laughs> who people are nuts. Yeah. Exactly. That's, a, that's a whole other podcast episode. <laughs> exactly. It's a whole another issue. A lot of um, men and women with their styling for their uh, date dating life, you know, oh. a little transitioning into that. And one thing that's really fun, like, is I will put together digital lookbooks so people don't even have to think about it. They can just, you know, scroll through the options. So it's um, dummy free, stress free. <laughs> oh, I love that's what we need. That's what us people that don't know how to do it. I wish I would have been born with your genes where you just know how to put <laughs> stuff together because I, I miss that. So there's other things I'm missing, <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> it's a trade off. <laughs> But yes, getting ready does not stress me out. So that's great. So yeah, like to- that's nice. Oh, Jessica, it's been so fun. I'm so glad I met you. Yeah, and I you so am much. so excited about your store and your little kid. I think it's genius. So I will spread the word on my own. But I think it's I appreciate awesome. that because honestly, I don't know any woman that doesn't need it. They may not know either. yet, but then once they get it, they realize I've already gotten such uh, positive feedback of that sort of people saying, oh, I didn't even know what moleskin was. Oh, wow. Now my shoes aren't giving me horrible blisters or I didn't know what boob tape was instant cleavage. Like there's all kinds of things in there that people have never tried that you all of a sudden going to be like, I can't live without. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, for sure. Send me all the links so I can put it in the show notes. That way people can just quick click and see what it all is yeah. and make it easy for everybody. But absolutely. Anyway. All right. I will be in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you so, you nice so much. To meet you. All right. Thank we'll take you care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.